Today, we're gonna to be talking about the five things to look for if you are looking to step up from your entry-level guitar into something a little bit better, whether it's something like going from this Yamaha to that Taylor, or God forbid, going from something like this guitar, if you remember this, to maybe like this Yamaha. We'll break it down for you, stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Sneezy Greenberg. <laughs> We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store linked below for some custom designed t-shirts. Of course, you can buy things from our website too. That's always helpful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, getting over your allergies, Cooper. Thank God it's allergies. <laughs> all right, guys. He's sneezing, but we're okay. We're, we're okay. taking it easy. It's we're not the Rona. Um, <laughs> hey, before we start, actually, I'd like to take a moment and thank everybody who watches our videos, who comments below. Uh, I believe you're kind of part of our community, and uh, you know, I've really gotten uh, a joy of getting to know people over the years. It's my goal that by the end of the year or into next year, we'd be at 100,000 subscribers. And right now, we're over 60,000, which I never would have thought if you'd seen how our videos started out about six years ago. So, you know, please, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to click subscribe if you're enjoying our content. And the content today is specifically talking about a step-up instrument. So most of us have at one point in our life, and maybe you're there, been at the point in our guitar playing where it's time to move on mm -hmm. from the instrument we started at. What was your first guitar? You, you probably had a pretty decent one, right? I, I started with a, it wasn't the Amazon guitar, but I started on like a little you know, probably half size nylon, that was no brand name. And then I went to an Ibanez electric acoustic, which was awesome. And then I got my step up to a tailor. Um, and I think you probably helped out when I was a customer yeah. with that process. But you realize I, I've known you since you were in high school, right? I think you've known me longer than that, yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah. But either way, yeah, it was, you know, the natural steps from. I remember seven when Cooper had short hair and I had hair. So, yeah. Rock and roll. <laughs> what was your first? My first guitar actually had a brand name. Uh, it was Tom, um, and it was uh, purchased in uh, Progreso, Mexico for $50. It was black. It was nylon string. Uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I, I, it, was, it was kind of coercion. You know, I kept asking my mom for a guitar, and she's like, no, you just want a guitar to get chicks. I'm like, damn. Um, I'm nine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, so I'm, I'm in high school. I've, I've been wanting a guitar. I already played music, um, and I joined mariachi band. Nice. So we had a new band director, if you ever watch this, shout out to Ronnie Rios, who is an excellent band director down in Harlingen, Texas, where I grew up. And uh, it was kind of a coup. I'm like, you know, I'm going to join Mariachi with my friend Pete, and uh, who was an amazing guitar player, still is. And, uh, you know, I, I would need a guitar. So then she has to buy me a guitar, and that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Pete came with this really nice Yamaha, and I came with this black Tom, a little Tom. guitar. Yeah. And, and the strings were like super high off the fretboard. And so, you know, early on, I, I needed, like from the get-go, I needed a step-up yeah. instrument. Before you even put your hands on Tom, Before I ever got, step up. got good at all, you yeah. know, that guitar eventually imploded. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> eventually I did upgrade. And, and like you, I, I had an Ibanez acoustic uh, mm -hmm. in there, an Ibanez. Uh, Acoustic electric guitar and that was great, and then you know Taylors and and you know Martins and Gibsons and all sorts of cool stuff. But I know there's a lot of people out there that you you either got an instrument uh, maybe last Christmas or at some point, and if you've invested in it, you'll find the shortcomings at some point mm -hmm. of the guitar that you have. Now, the worst case scenario would be if you got one of these, and some people might remember we threw this thing into a dumpster. But uh, what you don't know is that I made Josh crawl into that dumpster, our man squatch behind the camera, and retrieve it. Um, just, you know, for future use as decoration at an Applebee's or something. So this is a guitar <laughs> we reviewed that is a very popular, a top selling guitar on Amazon. We've had lots of people bring these in, even since we did that video, and they're not good instruments, you know. So it's not something that's easy to learn on, has a lot of shortcomings to it, won't even stay in tune. Um, and so if you were gifted this and you're serious about playing guitar, right off the bat, you need a step-up instrument. Um, but even if you get something nice like this Yamaha, these go for just over $200. This is a Yamaha FG800, and we've talked about it on this channel before. I'm a huge fan of these guitars. These are really, really good quality guitars. They have a lot of features that I would recommend, but even this, you, you might play for a while and go, okay, I want something else. So there's, there's at least five things I think we've identified that mm -hmm. we suggest that you look for 
when you are stepping up to an instrument. Um, and particularly from kind of a beginner's instrument, you know, moving up to the next level. So let's talk first about the blue guitar. You want a guitar, regardless, that stays in tune, uh, is easy to play, comes from a reputable name brand, not just because name brands are cool or something like that, but there's quality and craftsmanship and warranties yeah. and, and uh, customer service and dealer networks and all this stuff that kind of exists behind that stuff. Um, you know, so that's something you want to look at. You know, I think playability when you're starting off is vital. Of course, you want it to be appealing to you. We talked about this in another video. As a player, you're physically attracted to it or, you know, you, you think it looks good. Yeah. You know? um, and then, you know, it sounds good. Yeah. Right. So those are basics. Like any guitar should fit that as a basic. Okay. Then from there, let's talk about some of the, the features that I think... Uh, present the best opportunity and value for a step of guitar. So one, and I want to see your thoughts on this, I think a solid top may not be necessarily on your first guitar. You know, Fender and, and, and others make some great, even laminate, all laminate guitars. Yeah. Um, there's some, you know, affordable classical guitars that are all laminate and they're good guitars. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think a step up should definitely have a solid top at least. I think that's a really just nice baseline thing, not only for the sound quality, but also for the longevity of the instrument and how it's gonna age and over time, how it'll develop more and more sound. I think that's pretty crucial. Yeah, the, the top is called the soundboard, and that's literally where the sound comes from. It's the strings vibrating that and kind of pumping the acoustic guitar, you know, and that's where the sound comes from. So it's important to have something that I think is solid top. It's just gonna move more, be more resonant. Um, you could expand that to all solid wood, and I think that's definitely something to step up to at some point. But looking at all solid wood construction, whether it's the top or the entire body, should be part of your shopping experience. And I say it should be and could be on the body because it depends upon price. Here's a great example of what we're talking about as a step up instrument. So this is an Academy 12E from Taylor. And it's a great guitar. It's a few hundred dollars more than this Yamaha, but it still also has layered, or mm -hmm. laminate, depending upon how you look at it, back and sides. So real wood, it's no HPL, but it's yeah. it's like the Yamaha, it's it's a ply. It's multiple layers of wood. And what happens with that are two things. One, it's very resilient to humidity and temperature changes. It's going to be great as you move around with your guitar, particularly if you are learning and maybe are learning how to take care of your instrument, it's going to help with that. Um, but because it's multiple layers of wood, like plywood, it's really strong. It doesn't mm -hmm. move around so much. So solid wood is, in a great instrument, preferable. It's more resonant, it vibrates more, but it's more expensive. You know, it's, it's, it's harder to work, at, uh, work on in a factory standpoint. It's, you have to carry all sorts of things. So, you know, that would kind of even be the next step up. I don't know that you'd go from a $200 or $300 guitar to an $800 guitar necessarily. You might. Maybe even go to a thousand dollar guitar, in which case that comes into play. But I think at least the top should be solid. Yeah. Agreed? Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Now, the next thing I think is, you know, bracing's part of it, but I don't think that's the next thing. I think the next most important thing, and maybe even more important than top, potentially, is feel. What do you think? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, what you're going to encounter first when you pick up your instrument and sound quality and everything is obviously crucial, but you want it to be comfortable and um, like this, unlike a lot of maybe, yeah, good you know, the lower numbered series in Taylor's lineup, this is a step up from, say, an all laminate guitar, but it does have certain comfortability factors like the beveled uh, armrest area. You know, it's got a very comfortable neck. It's got a nice satin finish that's very mm -hmm. smooth. And um, yeah, I think the feel is huge. You know, looking at this Yamaha, these, these, play great and they feel great. But your your interaction with the guitar neck is really the most intimate interaction you have with the instrument, is with your left or right hand, if you're left-handed, you know, fretting the instruments, holding the neck. This is, this is where you have the most contact. And so I think the feel, the setup, and kind of the quality of the instrument is incredibly important. I learned something about Yamaha above a certain price point. They all get kind of a more meticulous setup. And so, at this price point, you know, it's, it's set up well from the factory, but when you move up to a more expensive guitar, they take more time and attention to it because, 
you know, you're paying a little bit more, it pays for that time and attention. That's just how these things work. And, uh, and I've noticed it in picking up some of their, uh, like the A-series A instruments, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, which is another great kind of step-up option. You know, the, the feel of the neck, not just the car, but really the attention to detail on the setup uh, is much improved. Yeah. I would also say when it goes into feel, if you're like a lot of people that we know and your first guitar may have been like an FA-125, like a Fender Dreadnought, or if you're playing a large Dreadnought as a beginner and you're not the largest person, you know, you're not, it's not super easy and it's not a very comfortable guitar. So. Um, for certain types of players. So it might not even be like a step up, but just laterally find the body shape that is comfortable in, in that field because there's not a ton of options when it comes to like the lowest entry level. But then when you're stepping up, you can always experiment with different shapes that might fit you better. Um, well, that's, a, that's actually a point that I wanted to bring up because I, I think generally speaking to your point, most affordable entry-level guitars, and we're talking about the guitars that typically come in a pack, for instance, or are right around that $150 to $200 price point, most of them, if not all of them when it comes to steel string guitars, are dreadnought guitars. Mm -hmm. It is, I mean, this is the quintessential kind of steel string flat top acoustic guitar shape, by and large. But you look at something like that, which is a you know, Taylor Grand concert size, and, and it's much more smaller, even though it's still a full-size guitar. And so for someone who may be more petite, for instance, uh, you know, that's probably preferable. And you just don't see a prevalence of small-bodied guitars until you reach a certain price point, yeah. generally speaking. There are a few out there. I know you'll probably put in the comments, well, what about this one? There are absolutely some exceptions. But generally speaking, you get more body shape options you know, once you move up in price. And that actually brings up another um, option that becomes available and I think is important to understand and look at, and that's electronics. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the biggest differentiators between, say, like this, there's this FG800 and then an FGX800C is two things that happens when you go to a step-up instrument. Electronics and a cutaway. They become options, right? Uh, there's a lot of models that then have it for a few hundred dollars more. The rest of the guitar is the same, right? An FGX 800C is this guitar with a pickup and a cutaway, right? Yeah. And so, you know, this is a great guitar. It's not taking anything away from that. But if you move up to a step-up guitar, know that, you know, generally if, if we're talking about solid tops and better, you know, playability, action, articulation from the instrument, all that stuff, you know, the pickups then tend to get better too. Is that what you have found in your experience? Definitely what I have found. So when I went from my Ibanez electric acoustic um, to, I went to a 214 CE Taylor. Um, I always plugged in because I was starting to play these terrible gigs um, and just the quality of say the expression system or if you get a Fishman, if you get an LR bags, like it makes such a difference in accentuating the natural sound of the guitar um, than something that's, you know, you're stepping up electronics when you step up the quality of the guitar, I think. But it's it's important for sure, especially if you're going to be gigging. Yeah. Well, and I think even the, the manufacturers of the, the pickups understand this. So, uh, you know, you might find a Fisherman pickup on a variety of guitar models uh, at a certain price point that has a certain feature set to it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to a Fishman system in a more expensive guitar model, and it has a different feature set to it. Maybe it's dual source where it has a microphone as well, or there's more uh, controls on the preamp beyond yeah. just volume and tone, for instance. Um, you know, multiband equalization and phase switches and, and all of these things that kind of come part and parcel with buying something that's, you know, a little bit more expensive and has more features. And so I think features is the other thing to look at. So you brought up the armrest bevel on there. Yeah. Okay. Which um, is not the most common thing. For, definitely not yeah. the most common thing. Yeah. Yeah. But there's all sorts of features. There's improved tuners. There's whether or not it has a strap button. Okay. This yeah. one doesn't have a strap button on the heel, you know, but more expensive models of other guitars do. Taylor definitely does for a very specific reason. It's a bolt on neck. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, you look at that, you look at the tuners that have been upgraded, you look... I don't even want to say aesthetics, but that is going to be one of the things. If you're looking at more expensive guitars, there will be other aesthetics. There will be inlay and stuff. Most of it's plastic. Some of it's stickers. I, none of it 
translates to the playability or the sound of the guitar, but it does the aesthetics, which we mentioned is important. So that's certainly a feature that you should look at. Um, but more so, I, I would say that it's it's some of the the design, the the hardware, the uh, the things like the nut, the saddle, and we talked about this with a Fender guitar, right? There's two acoustics that are separated by about hundred and thirty dollars or something yeah. like that, and it's the pickup, it's the saddle, it's the nut. You know, it's, it's those things that really make up the difference and a case. Yeah. Um, so you know, these are the things. Um, part of the features is indeed a case. This one doesn't come with anything. That one comes with a gig bag. Mm -hmm. Some guitars in a slightly higher price point are going to come with a hard shell case. So that's definitely important. And then the last thing I think is, and I, I put this last because I think it may be in this discussion, one of the hardest things to quantify until you're playing the instrument, but that's bracing. So bracing, this guitar comes with scallop bracing, which I think really was a game changer when they did that on these guitars. It went from the FG700 to the 800 scallop bracing, really opened up the sound of the guitar. It talks about how important it is to the resonance and the sound that you get from the instrument. That also has scallop bracing. Now, I don't know that we can just say scallop bracing. Taylor's doing V-class bracing on guitars. There's all sorts of bracing patterns, but is it just bracing or does the manufacturer who's building the guitar do something? Do they advertise some benefit to some system that they've implemented to ensure that the guitar is improved? Take a look at those things because, and here's why I say this, and, and maybe even previously, uh, denounced inlays and some things like that. There's a lot of guitars within a certain price range. And I'm thinking, and check me on this, see if I'm right. Between about $500 to $800, there's a range of guitars where some of them are huge improvements over the less expensive variety. And some of them just have fancy stuff that's been kind of stuck onto them. Yeah. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think- It's like when you see the car, that has like the stick on vent that someone bought at Walmart, you know? Yeah. Didn't it make it faster? That kind of thing? I think that you're bringing up an interesting point because there are, whether you're going from your very first guitar to your first step up or even stepping up within this massive range of guitars that exist, there, sh there will be a point when the next highest thing that you can go to is very fancy custom aesthetics once you're already up at a Taylor 914, you're really going to be stepping up to, say, a presentation series after that. And yes, the woods are different, the sounds are different, but then you're getting into meticulous territory where you're looking at aesthetics and something that is absolutely tailor-made, no pun intended, to what you want it to look like, all the fancy pants stuff. But I don't think that purely aesthetic step-ups should really occur before right. that point. Um, if you already play an you already play an American Ultra Strat, then you're going to be moving up to Custom Shop. You know, it shouldn't be moving from American Performer to American Professional to just based off of aesthetics. There's specific things that you can draw quality, you know, and value from, like everything that you've mentioned, and you should be wary of those that is just a fancier inlay but 300 extra dollars with, right. you know. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point to bring up. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, as we're discussing step-ups here, it comes down to, if this is you, um, you've probably, like I said at the beginning, you've, you've reached the point where you realize the limitations of your instrument. So if you started on something beginner and you've played for any variety of t amount of time, you have, you have figured out its deficiencies. And what this advice is, is to help you understand and how to address those deficiencies in your next instrument. I don't think inlay or color, by and large, does anything to you know, deal with those deficiencies. And so you know, to recap it, here's what you need to look at. The feel and playability of the guitar, okay? That's, if it feels bad, it doesn't, the rest doesn't matter. If it's hard to play, the rest doesn't matter. After that, at least a solid top get at least a solid top, okay? After that, we start looking at other features. Armrests on that guitar, um, the other features that you might find would be like the pickups that are available. Um, and I think a case, you know, I think a lot of guitars, I think more guitars should come with a case or gig bag. I like that there's manufacturers 
Taylor, Martin do this. Every single guitar comes with either a case or a gig bag. At a certain price, they should. And so I think you should look at that. Does it come with one? At a certain price, it should come with one. Um, and then, you know, as you're looking at features like your pickups and stuff, become discerning. Take a look at what's in each of these things um, and uh, what it does for you and how it maybe addresses some of the deficiencies you have or the things that you need that your guitar doesn't otherwise have at all. Um, and so I think that would be the best advice as you begin to look at it. Now, at the end of the day, there's a lot to choose from, right? You can walk into any shop, including ours, and look at a wall full of guitars or go to our, a website like ours and just see tons of options and it can be overwhelming. And so that's why we give you this advice. But if you'd like to get into a little bit more, uh, we do have on our website a buyer's guide that you can get. You just give us your email and we'll send it to you. And in that, I actually broke down um, a bunch of different things. And the idea is don't get a good deal on the wrong guitar. But I specifically talk about things like the radius of a fingerboard and why certain scale lengths and stuff appeal to certain players. And so we kind of get into the into the weeds, so to speak, and, and, and talk about nuance and stuff. But uh, if you have been playing, we encourage you to keep playing, and you're wanting to know what the next step is, beyond this video, that may be a good place to start. Absolutely. And call us or chat with us online, and we can get into specifics of exactly what you're looking for. I think we see a lot of times people come in and they're like, I want to get an acoustic guitar that's less than $200, and I also need a case and a tuner and, you know, all this different stuff that you can maybe spend less for all in one package mm -hmm. instead of piecing everything out. So, Or even find one of the bundles we put together on our website. Yeah, you know, we're, totally. we are doing this just to kind of peel back the curtain because we talk to so many people who are all on a similar path with very similar questions, and so... Uh, you know, what, what's, the, what's the tagline from J.K. Simmons on the Farmers? You know, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. He and I go to the same barber. I think we're trademark in <laughs> trademark territory over here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so hopefully this video has helped you. Um, and again, there's more resources through the buyer's guide and our chat function as well as phone calls where we can help you find the perfect guitar for you because at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one that you're stepping up to. That's right and making music on. So if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. Help us get to that 100,000 mark by, you know, hopefully the end of the year. Um, turn on notifications and like our videos and keep coming back for more. We'll keep making them for you. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.